It's time for another edition of Cowboys Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. As the Cowboys are back home, taking on the San Francisco 49ers, a noon kickoff Sunday at AT&T Stadium. Bill Jones along with Bucky Brooks, Isaiah Stanback, and Nate Newton. As the Cowboys got back on the winning track last week against Cincinnati, a 30-7 to win. Let's go around the horn to kick things off and uh, much needed to get back in that win column. Right, Bucky? Absolutely. Anytime you get a win, you should celebrate. And I think the Cowboys should be proud of their efforts. They did a great job of creating turnovers and playing the right way. And so to walk out of the stadium with the win, it is a step in the right direction. We'll see if they can stack other wins on top of those. That's it, Buck, man. These guys came with some energy. Um, and that's, that's the word of the day. They came with energy and they played with some physicality, two things that we've been missing all season. Um, let's see if these guys can remain um, in, that, in that stadium. They can be consistent in that throughout the rest of the season. You know, I like this team, man, because the, the back end, the, the safeties and corner, was, they were in survival mode. They made plays. They came up and made tackles. They kept everybody in front of them, and that was a great thing. Now, if they can just improve on, on that this week and keep it going, they'll be okay. And, of course, a lot of backups playing at the cornerback position. We'll have more on that in just a second. But uh, how about takeaways? It, it's pretty amazing when the other team is giving the ball away to you how much easier this game is, right, Bucky? Absolutely. It's the number one deciding factor in football. Whoever wins the takeover battle is typically going to win the game. And so they were able to get three early takeaways, one on a scoop and score touchdown, and it changed the way that the Cowboys played. They played from in front for the first time, and that is why they were able to cruise to a victory. Yeah, it was, it's a season of giving, and, you know, we're not we're, we're not going to reject any gifts. So uh, we definitely took advantage of that, and it's a lot easier uh, to win ball games when you have those turnovers, especially as early as the Cowboys did, um, and when you're able to play from ahead, different outcome. You know, the turnovers keep you keep you intensified, and that's what those guys, when they got those two turnovers back-to-back, -back, like there were those three turnovers in the three series back-to-back, -back, it keeps you intensified. It keeps your, your competition level up high, and these guys played well, I think. All right, uh, Nate alluded to it earlier, uh, the back end, the secondary, especially the cornerback position. They had backups going last week against Cincinnati, and uh, they were losing them in the second half as Richard Robinson and Savion Smith, uh, Chris Westry even. I, I was wondering if the cornerbacks coach, Al Harris, might have to go into the game and play. But it looks like this week, Bucky, uh, that uh, Cheeto Awuzie is back and Trayvon Diggs making some progress too. How big would that be? Oh, it would be huge because anytime you get a chance to get your starters back into the lineup, your uh, defensive production and performance should improve. And so it would be, I'll be excited to see what Trayon Diggs looks like after having some time away. What does he learn? Will the game slow down for him now as he returns to the lineup? Yeah, help is on the way. Uh, we, we need it. Uh, those are two guys that are obviously are our front runners um, as a, in terms of our starters. We need it not only just for personnel wise, but we need it just for energy. Um, we need guys that we can rely on. We need even if those guys are not playing as, as well as we would like them to. We, we, it's consistency. We haven't had that all year long. So when you get your starters back, um, it's, it's a little boost of morale for sure. Just come in and do your job. Play with consistency, play your techniques. And, and just play it snap by snap and see where you where you are settling in at. You know who has come in and done his job with consistency for a long time in this league? That would be the Cowboys long snapper, L.P. Latisar and Bucky on Sunday in this game against the Niners. It's game number 251 that breaks a record for a Canadian-born player in the National Football League. Bucky, to put this in perspective, Mike McCarthy was the offensive coordinator of the 49ers when Lattisar came into the league in 2005. It's unbelievable. I mean, 250 games is a remarkable accomplishment for any player, Canadian born or not. And so for him to have that kind of lasting power speaks to his consistency of high performance and hats off to him for being able to put together an outstanding career. LP, the legend continues. Uh, he's one of my one of my former teammates. He was here when I first got to Dallas. Um, he's a he's a he's a cornerstone of this team in terms of on, on terms of special teams. He's a guy that you don't have to worry about his production if he's going to be um, able to perform or not. You can rest assured that LP is going to take care of business, and he's right on the heels of Jason Witten too in terms of breaking that record. So, congrats, <laughs> LP. Thirteen or fourteen snaps a game, and at any time one of those snaps go away, and it can cost you a game. His consistency is who this guy is, and by the way. That's a long snapper. I mean, just in case y'all didn't know who we was talking about. 
<laughs> and you want your long snapper to be anonymous. And LP Lattisar at age 39 has been really anonymous in his career. And that means he's been pretty close to perfect in his career. All right, we're just getting started here on Cowboys Special Edition. Up next, Stephen Jones joins the show. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Salvation Army, doing the most good. And by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today. Cowboy Special Edition brought to you by AT&T continues now. And it's a chance for us to chat with Stephen Jones. Kyle Yeomans doing the honors this week. It's brought to you by Auto Nation. Thank you very much, Bill. Kyle Yeomans alongside COO Stephen Jones joining us from the Cowboys War Room here at the Star in Frisco. First off, Stephen, thanks for joining us as always. Secondly, it's the final three weeks of the year. It's been a crazy 2020 season, but whenever you look into these final three games of the year, how important are they to evaluating your football team? Well, it, it, it's a big three weeks for us, not only from an evaluation standpoint, but from a momentum standpoint for this team. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're still in it mathematically in the NFC East, and our, our intention is to go out and win these three games. Uh, we want to get better each and every week. I think we're doing that, and it would be a, you know, a big boost for, for our staff, for our cup players, for uh, the organization to go out and not only play well, but win these games. And uh, certainly we're going to get a great opportunity, as we did last week, uh, to look at some young players. I think uh, our first two practice squad players started the game, and we ended up with uh, – uh, our second two practice squad players, a total of four of them playing corner for us in that game. And, you know, hats off to the defense, how they uh, rose to the challenge and, and played well. I thought our, our corners did a really nice job. Uh, we'll be getting healthy there again. Uh, we'll be getting uh, Diggs back uh, here. He's, he's got a great opportunity to play this weekend. And uh, certainly Anthony Brown and Cheeto will be back. So it'd be great to see them. But as as you mentioned, it's, it's going to be a great opportunity to uh, you know, because some of these offensive linemen aren't coming back. Tyler Bydash should jump back in the mix. Uh, he'll start to get some play time again and hopefully, uh, you know, compete with Joe Looney right there. And then uh, certainly having Terrence Steele and Knight out there uh, until Zach gets back. Uh, you know, hopefully they'll con continue to develop as well. And then you got the obvious ones like, uh, you know, C.D. Lamb and, and Gallimore that are working in. And then even our young guy Robinson from Tulsa uh, should start to get some reps on special teams and uh, maybe get some defensive snaps. Now, you mentioned the defense, and of course, it's been a crazy year defensively trying to fill the void at the cornerback spot. But what's one thing that you haven't seen from the defense this season that you want to see or need to see in the final three weeks of the year? You know, I think the big thing is obvious. I mean, we just haven't done a great job of stopping the run this year. And I think if we can, you know, continue uh, to execute, to really get our hands around what we're doing from a, uh, you know, from a scheme standpoint, which I, I think our players are, uh, they played really well in the game. They created turnovers, which is certainly a staple that Mike uh, wants this defense to have. Both Mikes, if you will, Coach McCarthy and Coach Nolan. Uh, it was great to see those turnovers happen. And, you know, but the big thing, I, you know, we're certainly wanting to see is we get more consistent uh, with stopping the run. When, uh, you know, we got up on Cincinnati and they had to throw it, uh, you know, I thought we did a nice job of, uh, you know, in the passing game on the defensive side of the ball. So be interesting to uh, see down the home stretch here how, you know, that the defense can step up and uh, continue to get better and, uh, and certainly play a part in hopefully getting three wins. You keep mentioning Tyler Biotish as a name that continues to come up. And, of course, he was at the starting center spot earlier in the year. And then because of the injury, Joe Looney took that spot back over. But is Tyler Biotish your future at center? Is he the guy that's going to start there moving forward in the next couple of years? Well, you know, obviously that's what we drafted him for. He's a great player there at Wisconsin. Uh, comes from the same school as Travis, uh, Frederick. 
uh, you know, has a lot of the same qualities. Very smart, very competitive, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, he had won that spot uh, from Joe. Uh, I know Joe's not going to give it up easily again, but uh, Tyler is a guy who we think can be our future there. Obviously, we have the two Connors, uh, you know, that are going to be in there. Hopefully, Zach Martin next year gets to kick back down to guard. But, uh, you know, it'll be interesting when we get Zach back. I'm sure we'll put him right back out there at tackle for right now. I think he gives us the best opportunity to win with the two Connors there at guard. There he goes, Stephen Jones. Back to you, Bill. All right, thanks, Kyle and Stephen. And up next here on Special Edition, the guys rejoin the show and we break down the San Francisco 49ers. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new Sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a Sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today. This segment is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. We have we have a lot of football, not a lot, but three games. But you know we're still in it. We're not out of it. So I mean, of course these last two weeks are are, are um, they're um, important. Uh, of course we need to go win these three games so we can put ourselves in a in a in a position to, to win the division. Brought to you by Nationwide. There is Zeke Elliott who has been nursing that calf injury in practice this uh, past week. He has encouraged that he'll be able to play against the 49ers noon on Sunday. A San Francisco team that comes in here with a 5-8 and eight record on the season. Cowboys need to keep winning to still have a chance in the NFC East. Let's talk about this Niners offense, though, and let's uh, start with you, Isaiah, as uh, they've struggled on offense after, with uh, so many injuries on this team. Looks like Nick Mullins is once again going to get the start at uh, quarterback, and Raheem Mostert looks like he's going to play, too. Yeah, I mean, these guys are probably the most similarly uh, matched team that, that we faced all year long in terms of uh, overcoming adversity and injuries. Um, and, but this offense is is what they are. Um, they're not trying to do b double reverses, triple reverses, and things of that nature. Um, these guys were just in the, in the Super Bowl not too long ago, if everybody remembers. And, um, you know, their DNA is run the ball. Um, they run a very similar running scheme as we faced in Cleveland. Um, and that obviously presented some problems to us. Um, they're aggressive. Um, I'm worried about their scheme more so than I'm worried about their personnel in this particular game. I tell you what, they got 397 rushing plays. They got a 4.1 average. The Cowboys have not stopped the run yet. They have not protected the middle of the field. Even though they like that outside side zone play, all their players can get downhill real quick. So we got to defend the middle of the field because their offense will be poking with the run game. Oh, you can rest assured they can give the Cowboys a heavy dose of the run game. This is what the 49ers do. And on top of that, they've seen the tape and they've seen how misdirection and pre-snap motion hurts the Cowboys, particularly on the second level with Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch freezing at times. The 49ers use motion or shifting on 71% of their plays. You can see a lot of shifting followed by a power running game coming right behind it. We'll see if the Cowboys are up to the challenge. And that uh, power running back with a four-time Pro Bowler at fullback and Kyle Juszczyk. Uh Turn our attention to uh, the defense, the uh, strength of the team last year, number one in pass defense in the league. Of course, uh, as Isaiah alluded to, went uh, all the way to the Super Bowl a year ago, and their numbers are up there again this year despite their injuries, losing so many guys up front, especially Isaiah. Yeah, they've lost their dogs. I know we've had our share of injuries, but these guys lost their two go-to guys in terms of their defensive end, but yet they're still able to apply pressure. Um, and the reason why is because, again, this is their their DNA. Uh, Coach Sal, their defensive coordinator, is aggressive. He's a young gun who's going to bring it. Um, he's going to challenge us. Um, he's going to isolate our tackles with these wide nine techniques and try to get some pressure on, on Andy Dalton and make it un un uncomfortable. He lost their dogs, man. They lost a pit bull and a rock wild <laughs> but at the same time. And they still do what they got to do. Uh, they play good team defense. They understand what, what is expected of them. They're giving up a few more points, and that's where it counts the most. And so if you can get in the red zone and score some points, you make them stay ahead of this defense. But if not, they will eat. Look, this is a very, very tough defense. And even though they've lost a lot of people, they've also – quietly shifted how they play. They're no longer just a single high safety team. They've mixed in some quarters because they believe their corners are outstanding at getting turnovers. Richard Sherman, Jason Verrett. They also have a linebacker in Fred Warner. 
the Cowboys must take care of the ball. It's a lot of pressure on Andy Dahl to make the right decision. They lost uh, top dogs uh, to injury during this season, and they lost their great Dane, DeForest Buckner, in uh, free agency <laughs> to the Indianapolis Colts in the offseason. All right, when we continue here on Cowboys Special Edition, we turn our attention to the key matchups in Sunday's game. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Welcome back to Cowboys Special Edition as we get you set for the Cowboys and the Niners noon kickoff on Sunday at AT&T Stadium. Let's look at some of the key matchups in this game. Let's start with you, Isaiah Stanback, as uh, you take a look. Oh, you be an old receiver. You're going to look at the receiver against the multiple-time Pro Bowler cornerback Richard Sherman. Amari Cooper for you, Isaiah. Yeah, I got old Coop Dog versus my ex-teammate Richard Sherman, Mr. Stanford Cardinal himself. Um, you know, Coop has an opportunity to go out here and, and eat this game. Um, you know, he's very he's very fast. Obviously, Richard Sherman has lost a step um, coming off of his Achilles injuries of the past. He's not the same physical up in your face DB that he once was, but he is still the, the very intellectual player that he that he has been and that he continually continues to be. Um, Cooper's gonna have to beat him with speed. Uh, Cooper, uh, as, as Sherman's going to be playing a lot of soft coverage, so there's going to be a lot of space for him to work. I'm um, looking forward to seeing him go over the top a couple times. All right, the matchup that uh, Nate has this week, get to the interior of that Cowboys offense. So imagine that. Nate's going with the interior <laughs> of the offensive line for the Cowboys. Uh, get, you know, the, the Niners have lost some guys up front, Nate, but they do have big Eric Armstead, don't they? Man, 6'7", 290, he's long. I mean, he's real long. So these short guys got to get their hands inside, got to have right, the right uh, f uh, foot placement. They got to do everything in the right and correct order. Dude, this dude is athletic enough to get around them and get through them. All right, and Bucky's a matchup uh, as the Cowboys try to run the football against the Niners. And uh, Zeke says he's going to be good to go, says he's going to have to nurse that calf probably the rest of the season. But they got a pretty good linebacker in Fred Warner, don't they, Bucky? Yeah, Fred Warner is one of the best in the business. He is outstanding at coming up and filling holes, but he also has the ability to drop in coverage. This is a game where the Cowboys need to run the football to control it, and so Zeke Elliott has to be a big part of the game plan. The thing is, he has to deal with 52. He has to deal with Fred Warner sitting in the middle of that hole. Can he deal with him? All right, just some of the key matchups to look for as the Cowboys take on the Niners on Sunday at AT&T Stadium. And we got keys to a Cowboys victory when Cowboys Special Edition continues in just a moment. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Final minute here of Cowboys Special Edition brought to you by AT&T. Bill Jones, Bucky Brooks, Isaiah Stanback, and Nate Newton. And how do the Cowboys win this game against San Francisco? Let's go around the horn. Let's start with you, Bucky. What's a key to a Cowboys win? The key to the Cowboys victory, I'm going to say, I'm going to put the big sombrero on Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Esch. If they are doing their jobs and they're in the gaps and stopping the run, then the Cowboys have a chance. But if they're running around lost in the sauce, no chance for the Cowboys to win this because it's going to be tough to stop their run game. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put the pressure on our offensive coordinator and our defensive coordinator. I think both of them have to have the games of their life. Um, it's going to be a challenge because this is, you know, these guys are tough and you know exactly what you get when you face There's a physical game. Two tackles, defensive tackles, do your job. Do your job. We want to see them guys run the Choctaw cashing in on us, man. Come on. <laughs> there you go. We need Nate to give the pregame speech. He just gave the pregame speech. They're, they're in their team hotel tonight. They're listening to Nate. I'm going to do my job tomorrow. So if they do their job, Cowboys win, right, Nate? That's right, by one. By one. We'll see you next time on Cowboys Special Edition.